Hey, it's Bobby O from the uh, Cutest Marketing Team. Hey, another edition of the Cutest Car Combo with uh, myself and Lucas Van Ness, first round draft choice of the Green Bay Packers. But I'm picking them up today in a uh, beautiful Ford Expedition Platinum, luxury loaded, can't beat it. But we're gonna be off in a minute. Got my boy Evan with me today. We're gonna have some fun. Let's go. Be interesting with like the holiday and stuff going on. I'll be interested to see how many people uh, come and stop on by. You got you got a lot of plans for later today, right? Yeah, I mean it's just. Uh... So my birthday is actually on Thursday. I turned 22. This, this last? This last? No, this upcoming oh, this Thursday. Okay. Gotcha. And uh, with the fourth on Tuesday, um, I've had plans now to go out to California on Monday. Um, you train out there, right? Yes. So I trained at Proactive, which is in kind of like North Calabasas area. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, they, they work directly with Athletes First, our agency. Um, so when I decided to go with Athletes First, they sent me out there. and. I just had a great couple months. I felt like they prepared me great for the combine. Um, Who? What other? What about other athletes? There was like, there? I mean, I there was Aaron uh, Aaron Rodgers, although no longer with us. Right, but, right, um, right. He was there like, when you were there. Yeah, I mean Kevin Durant. There's oh, there wow. was a bunch of like high high profile players coming through. Um, that had to be kind of a thrill for you. Oh, though. awesome! And it just uh, the competitive environment in the building um, is, you know, you can't really get that anywhere else. So. It's just good. Uh, as much as I can say, I you know I work out hard and I do uh, a lot by myself. It, it, you know, having that extra motivation and just working around with some other guys, you just can't beat it. Oh, I so I got it. Every time uh, I only have a couple more weeks here, so my goal is to try to bump out there either on uh, Monday for a week, uh, tough with the holiday, but or either next week and go out there. When do you actually start training camp? The rookies have to be there on the 21st. Uh, the vets don't have to be there until a week later, um, but. 21st, and then I think our first preseason game is two weeks after that in August. Who do you guys start with? Uh, we go to we're at Cincinnati. Okay, very good, very good. So they do like the joint practices. So I'll be out there with them for a week. Uh, you practice all week with them, and then you and then you play them on Sunday. Yeah, I think the Bears uh, are doing drum with the Colts. I thought yep. I heard. Yep. Yeah, it'll be fun uh, having our opening game in Chicago. That'd be uh... so. <laughs> so okay, we got to talk about uh, yeah. Uh, Cole Komet and your relationship in that scenario. Um, yeah, I mean Cole is my uh, my girlfriend's brother. <laughs> so, uh, oh my gosh. So it was, uh, you know, they were actually he was great throughout the process. He's actually a athletes first as well, and coincidentally has the same exact agent. Um, oh, so that, so how did you get? How did you? Now you're from the suburbs, so is he? Yeah, he were both from Barrington, but they went to the private school. Um, they went to Vider, and I went to Barrington, so. We actually only lived a couple miles from each other grew, um, growing up, had a lot of the same friends. Um, my girlfriend, Frankie, she went to the University of Iowa and we had a similar group of friends. Oh, wow, so that's where you guys kind of met in yeah, Iowa. Okay. I like to say she set me up with her friend first. Oh uh, my God. But uh, kind of got together and have been with her for a little over a year now. And uh, actually on our off, on our bye week last year, I went to a Bears game with their family and uh, Cole's agent, Kyle McCarthy was there. and briefly met him and at that point I didn't really know I was going to come out of the uh, out for the draft that year and uh, started building some connections and they do this thing called an under draft uh, report where you can submit a report to the uh, kind of like the NFL front office and they'll give you a estimated grade with like they say 95% accuracy so wow. I received a second round grade which is pretty substantial because they usually only give out uh, 15 first and second round grades to all every underclassman and I would say usually about 50 to 75 percent of the first second and third rounds are like underclassmen wow because um, they just got a value age and kids yeah. and have uh, prospects who have a little bit more of time on their side because um, like they say it's the not for long league um, and then uh, met him and after the bull game we kind of briefly reached back out together and we had a really good connection building and I, you know, kind of decided to go with them. But, uh, you know, Cole's awesome. I go over there and eat with their family a bunch and we've always had a good, uh, good kind of friendship. But All right, uh, so, so it'll, it'll be exciting to get on the field and kind of- At the first game, yes. okay, your lady singing the fans in the stands, right? <laughs> yep. She wearing green and gold or blue and orange? 
It's a good question. We're gonna test her loyalty. <laughs> we sure are. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, now you come from the I'm Chicago thinking, suburbs. You got to be a Bears fan growing up, right? Yeah. I was actually, uh, you know, I was, but I was more of a Blackhawks fan. Okay. Uh, I played hockey all the way until my senior year, um, and I was growing up when they won, you know, three of those Stanley Cups. Yeah. Uh, I remember going to all the parades, so I've actually only ever been to one Bears game, but I've been probably a 10 to 15 different Blackhawks games. Awesome. So, I'm a Blackhawks fan. Well, hey, now they got a lot to look forward to with, right. with Bedard. Bedard getting yeah. drafted, super excited, and I'm, uh, I'm pumped for him. I mean, they're comparing him to Gretzky. Yep. Say so he's generational. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But, uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, that's funny. I'm, I'm thinking uh, she'll have to get like a custom made uh, half and half shirt or something. Yeah, I think I should have to have a custom half and half shirt. Because it's got to be so funny because of, you know, Cole and his parents and you guys are all so close to them. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They're actually uh, heading up here tonight. Their parents are um, coming and having a little barbecue. So, oh, fantastic. Good night. But yeah, they're an awesome family. And uh, I know she kind of gets the, the brood of a little bit of the talk of it all. So. It's, a, it's a very unique scenario. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Totally. So how was Iowa? What did you what did you uh, how'd you like how'd you end up in Iowa and and uh, how'd you like going to school there? You know, I had a uh, I was rather unrecruited coming out of high school. Um, I was kind of a tall, lengthy kid, probably about I think my senior year I ended up being like six four, two hundred fifteen pounds. Mm -hmm. um, so had a good frame on me. Uh, Following my junior year, uh, I had a good season and uh, kind of decided, you know, I, I might want to try to play in college. And uh, like I said, I was always a hockey kid. My yeah, goal, if you would ask me, is when I was little, was to play, play, play in NHL, yeah. play for the Blackhawks. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, following my junior year of high school, I went to a few camps, uh, you know, went to Iowa, Illinois, kind of that Big Ten West circle over there, um, Northwestern, Wisconsin, and started picking up some uh, some traction and got a couple offers everywhere, everywhere I went. Um, and uh, I had an older sister at the time from Iowa, and coincidentally, my parents both went to Iowa State. So it, uh, at great, first, great they, school. Yeah, they were a huge fan of the Cyclones of the Hawkeyes. Um, but went to the school, loved it. Uh, the program, the defense, you know, they're traditionally very good. Um, I appreciated the stability they had with Coach Ferentz, you know, being there for, yep. and he's going on 23 years now. Um, and you just don't really find that nowadays. Everyone's just jumping all over and looking for that next best job. So. I appreciated him with what he established there, and uh, ended up committing the, my summer of would have been I think 2019, and uh, committed to Iowa and middle linebacker spot as as a defensive end. Defensive end. Okay. And uh, I actually just switched to linebacker now. This is my first time ever doing this uh, here at the Packers. So you're um, DE at Iowa. You didn't play linebacker at all. I did not. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. And it's. It's different, so Iowa runs a 4-3 system, so we have four down linemen and three linebackers, whereas the Packers run a three-down system, so they have three down linemen and then four backers. But in certain packages, two of the outside linebackers, you know, convert basically to a defensive end or like a mm -hmm. down lineman. Mm -hmm. So it's really very similar to what I've been doing. I just have a little bit more freedom. I play more on the edge. Um, and I and you told me you like that. To go sack the quarterback, yeah. which I love. You know, that's, that's what I want to go do. Um, and uh, my senior year is when COVID hit, so it was uh, an interesting year. My second half of my whole senior year, I was actually up here uh, with my siblings, just working out and kind of living my best life. Um, can't go wrong living up in Lake Geneva. Oh, it's the best. And uh, went to Iowa, and the, mem the moment I stepped on campus in the heat of it, I got to get a test, a PCR test right up the nose. Oh, um, that's and, right, yeah, middle COVID. It, I, and then, I didn't think uh, about that. That really kind of mess up your... Yeah, it was... It was a really weird freshman year. And yeah. uh, I think over the course of a year, I probably got stuck up the nose maybe three to 500 times God. daily, yeah. um, which was crazy. But What a change of life for a college kid to be going through that time. Totally, know? totally. And uh, coming in, I, you know, walk around with masks everywhere. We, yeah. you know, coming at the facility, we were required to, you know, get tested, wait in like a waiting area, get allowed in the building. Um, masks were working now, practice, it was just, there was a lot going on, and then the season got canceled, the Big Ten season, my freshman year, which was, everyone was like, like, what do we do? You know, so they sent us all back home, and uh, for two, three weeks we were home, and then we got a call and said, hey, it's back on. Yeah. Ship us all back out to school. That is crazy. Trained, and then the season started, and uh, I redshirted my freshman year, so it was only, it was a shortened season. Um, I think it was eight games, we only played six. We had a couple of... Uh, uh, teams who had COVID issues and were, wasn't able to play that week, uh, and uh, 
redshirted and kind of just was a, a, a really great year for me to kind of develop into my body. I put on mm -hmm, like 60 mm -hmm. pounds my first year. Um, so really built into my change. body. Totally. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't get uh, body hair. I didn't get armpit hair until my freshman year of high school, of college. So <laughs> that's amazing. It took me a little bit to develop. Uh, oh, that's so funny. Kind of grew into my body, and uh, you know, I was kind of at the awkward stage of high school where you don't yep. you don't understand yep. like your body and mm -hmm. you know your hands and your feet and you know move as coordinatedly. So I, you know, again was able to kind of grow into my body. Um, I moved down into defensive tackle. My uh, my sophomore year, uh, you know, spring ball of my sophomore year felt, my coach felt I played a little high and he kind of needed to work on my hands. And that's a, that's a tough position down there. You're taking yeah, double oh, teams yeah. from 600 pound, uh, you know, two, 300 pound guys. Um, you got to learn how to use your balance. You have good feet, you know, reaction blocks. And just taught me a lot how to be a good solid football player. Um, and then had the opportunity to move out to defensive end this last year and thought I excelled out there and uh, following the bowl game, me and my family decided to be, uh, you know, the, the goal of the lifetime, which, you know, I've been working for to go and play in the NFL. So wow, decided exciting. to enter, enter the draft and go out to California and work for three months and go to Indianapolis. and For the combine? Yes. Oh, you're 40. I ran a 4.58. So Get out of here. At 272 pounds. So I was cooking. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that motor is running. Right? Um, wow. And it's uh, it, it gets mundane for three months. You you get on you get on the yard line and you're you're training get offs and starts and you know you're just waiting. You're just all the anticipation building up to that day is just crazy. But um, couldn't have asked for but a better way of it. And I'm so so excited to be a part of the Packers. It just all worked out you know better than I ever could have. So what about benching and squatting? What do you what kind of iron you push? Um, well. Uh, my heaviest I ever got at Iowa, we don't, you don't really squat as like part yeah. of the combine. Mm -hmm. um, I got up to, we never do by ones, yeah. but I got up to 575 pounds by five. Oh man. Um, and then my bench. That's the Hercules. <laughs> right. That's what they call me. Um, and then I think, if I remember correctly, the best bench I got up to was 375 by five. That's a stack, brother. <laughs> got some That's wheels on there. Got some wheels on there. That is amazing. So your 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 most uh, I saw in the Packers thing about your your one of your most favorite plays was that play I think you sacked someone in the end zone or something like that. Yep, that was uh, my sophomore year against Nebraska. Um, That's right. I don't know how much I can say, but our whole entire team actually had the flu. Uh, literally two days before, the whole team wakes up right from travel and everybody is sick. Seven, maybe seventy percent of the team all had the flu. Just went around, and uh, we all decided you know we're going to go still. To, you know, we're gonna go and try to play. So they, they hit us all with IVs um, pre-game. We're all in the locker room. Not unusual. Up, up on bags, and yep. it actually ended up being one of the, my, the best games I've had. You know, had a couple sacks and uh, um, a, uh, a, a safety. And so, a what, tell TFLs. me about that that particular play. Take me a setup on that play because I saw just, I saw the video of it. It's awesome. Yep. I uh, there was actually a, a game called there. They call it a Tom Stunt which is basically an interior game where uh, one of the uh, D tackles goes and picks the center and another loops around. And basically I went to go pick the center and he slid away to the other defensive tackle and I had a free go. So I just went through my gap, made a TFL and uh, was able to bring the guy down. But just super memorable. memorable. Uh, that uh, Nebraska stadium's super awesome. It's, yeah, uh, oh yeah. You know, I think they get up to like 90,000 people in there. I still think it's you know, one of the best stadiums I've played in. I, I know all the Nebraska fans would love to So is that with the QB, the Nebraska QB? Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, they like to call it a, a rivalry, um, although it's not, you know, uh, unfortunately they got us last year, but um, we usually are able to, uh, I don't know how you can, you know, win eight in a row. I don't know if you can call it a, a competition. <laughs> well, I saw it on videotape, and I got to tell you, next to the Rudy Sack and the quarterback against Georgia Tech, I thought that was the second best I've ever seen. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you don't got to gas me up too much. <laughs> oh, man. That's so, awesome. So uh, you, got, you got a place already set up in Green Bay? You got your own um, place? You room with anybody? I, uh, it is hard. You know, you, you move into a place, and you kind of have, uh, they, they give us some temporary living out of, like, an extended stay hotel for a couple months to figure out what you're doing. And basically, you take a place that you've never been to and you you know have limited time to kind of explore and go look around and you kind of have to go find a place so that's you know I've been in the process of looking at some different properties or some different you know apartments or townhomes um, some great options up there I'm kind of uh, 
over this, you know, next week or two, I'm in the process of trying to close and figure out what, you know, exactly what I want to do. Um, but, you know, I'm getting out, I'm getting booted out of the hotel here in a couple weeks. Yeah, so yeah, I gotta, yeah. I gotta so figure, figure out, out to, plan B quick. Exactly. Very soon. But I have some good ideas and uh, I have a great support staff and I have, uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of good options. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it too much. It's more just figuring out location and do I want to be five minutes away or do I want to be 10 minutes away? And, uh, right. It's, it is really hard to know without ever spending any significant time there. Oh yeah, so 100%. I think the more, um, I think even if I end up, you know, I was going to buy a place, but I think if I end up even just renting for a year and figuring it out, you know, the best places to kind of stay and whatnot, then, you know, going into this following year, if I fall in love with the place, I have the ability to kind of jump on something. Well, you, you're getting pretty close to your first day of walking on the field of a game at Lambeau Stadium. Yep. I bet you just can't imagine can't what that's going to feel like. I've just, I've heard so many people tell me how electric it is, and it's one of the best, you know, best game day experiences they've ever been, uh, you know, been in, and uh, I've never been to a game at Lambeau, and, you know, I'm just so excited to walk out there in that green and gold and hear the roar of the fans and be able to get out there and help the team. So, really looking forward to it. You know, that stadium always reminds me a little bit of Rocky Stadium in yep. Notre Dame. Yep. You know, and uh, I don't know if you knew this, but Curly Lambeau, the, the founder of the Packers, yes. played for New Rocky in Notre Dame. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, so I think part of the green and gold, when he came up to the Green Bay, brought from... Oh, okay, Notre makes sense. Awesome. And uh, I've I've never been there either, but that's funny because my... Cole Komet, my girlfriend's brother, actually played in Notre Indeed, Dame. Indeed, right, sure. And uh, her brother currently still plays baseball there, and they're big, uh, they're big Notre Dame fans. So I've I've heard a lot about how awesome that is. But that's funny. I, I could totally see how the the resemblance can like the gold and the green from uh, Notre Dame up to Green Bay. Yeah. So, uh, but most Packer fans don't realize it. Had no really idea. Although the founder was, a, I had no was idea. A, was a Notre Dame guy under, under New Rockley. Really? Yeah. And that's what's so awesome about there is there's so much history. And oh, yeah. Every time I walk around the building, um, when I actually just went up there uh, last week, I went up and signed, um, just made everything official. I uh, was able to sign this wall that they've had every first rounder uh, sign since they've been there. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, probably had, you know, 60 plus names on it. It's just cool to step back and realize that this building, you know, has been here for a while and the people that walk through these doors and the amount of history that's here. I mean, so. I think the Bears and the Packers are the two oldest in the NFL. I think yep. 1919 yes. or 1920. And we actually just took them over last year in the uh, total uh, rivalry against each other. So this year will be a big one. That's, so it's even now, right? I think we're up one on up them. Up one, okay. Yes. Well, that's good because you know, so many years, you know, the, the Packers own the Bears, but but now I think, you know, the tide's level a little bit, so I think that the next coming years of your career are going to be really fun to watch yes, for both teams. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah, we're, we're a young team right now. We're, uh, we got a lot of Jews. I think, you know, everyone is kind of questionable on our expectations, but I know for a fact that, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, make people proud and we're going to go out and work our hardest every day. Well, here we are at Cunis in Elkhorn, and uh, we've got some fans already lined up out here <laughs> waiting. So, uh, great talking to you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you.